Guess who's back? Yeah, this is proof of life. And I really missed you guys. I miss you guys a bunch and a lot. I just added this interjection right after the intro clip because I forgot to introduce myself. Can you imagine? Hi guys, I, for you those that already know me, no need for you to actually watch through this intro clip. But if you don't, hi, my name is Dr. Moses Kazebu. Let's jump right in. Hi guys, I, I didn't know how to get back uh, to the regular stuff. I know most of you haven't seen me in quite a while. A lot has been going on in my life. It's been quite an overwhelming past few weeks and I thought, what best way can I introduce myself back to the channel than do one of the series that you guys have been wanting for so long? This is Hospital Survival Guide, Season 1, Episode 7, I think. And before I actually move any further, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. And yeah, let's just jump right into this. Before we actually go into a lot more details about this, I would like to say a big, big thank you for helping reach, helping the channel reach 3,000 subscribers. Can you imagine that? 3,000. 3k subscribers, I never really thought that we would achieve 1,000 subscribers, 2,000 subscribers, and now 3,000 subscribers, all in over one year. And it's been quite immense on the channel, and I only hope that we can reach out to more people and we can touch more people. So today we're going to be talking about five tips on how to survive eye med rotation. I know most of you are coming from being a student and rotating an IMED and learning IMED, it's a bit difficult for most of you. I don't know why, but it's not so bad actually. And now that you've graduated and now that you're preparing for your internship or maybe you have started internship and you're going to IMED as your next rotation and you're wondering, how is IMED going to be? Is it going to be fun? Is it going to be just like I was a student? Who knows, maybe it would be worse. <laughs> Whatever doesn't kill you <laughs> will eventually kill you. I know you expected that to turn out a whole lot different. So these are my five tips to help you survive in the IMED rotation and to do your best in the IMED rotation. So tip number one, which I often just use to give everyone advice is that the topic a day keeps the sap away. I think I should actually use that as one of my motors. A topic a day keeps the sap away. So each and every single day, please make sure you pass through a, a particular topic. You're going to be tired as an intern because you have so much responsibility more than what a student actually is having. So you're going to be having to work extra harder for you to read through these topics and you to grasp and you to understand these topics. So it means that each and every single day, please make sure you pass through one topic. And you'll find out that within the first two or three weeks, you'll be able to read and have I have been accustomed to the usual conditions and the dosages of certain things. The second thing is surviving the cold days. Dum, dum, dum. I think that doesn't add the effect. Let's add the effect with the sounds. Oh. Anyways, I know I'm dramatic. So the second thing is surviving the cold days. So often you see a lot of patients on cold days, especially if your, road, your cold days are happening to be midweek or early week or late week, depending on the type of season or depending on what time of day or whether it's month end or it's not month end, you may see a lot of patients or you may not see a lot of patients. So suppose if you have a lot of patients, these are some of the tips and tricks that I've learned to help reduce my file load and my workload. So these are unofficial things, so please do not quote me on them. So when you get a lot of files, first of all, have a look at which patients are critical. Have a look at the vitals, have a look at uh, the conditions that the patients usually have. So if you see that the patient is hypovolemic or hypotensive, or they are in distress, or they are desaturating, attend to those patients first, as quickly as possible. Usually these are um, 
is a triage that's done by the nurses. So the patients that can wait a bit longer can actually wait if you have a lot more critical patients. And you find out that most of the times it's the patients that are okay that usually make a lot of noise. But sometimes even the patients that are not so okay sometimes do make a lot of noise. I don't know how that works out. Anyways, so attend to those patients first. But suppose if you have, let's say, five stable patients, then what I often usually do is like a, like a quick triage. I call in the patient, ask them what they really have, and order investigations uh, for that patient first, such that when this patient is gone for investigations, I will remain with the other patient, such that I'm taking the history for the other patient, such that when the other patient comes back from investigations, I send this one for investigations, and I take the history of this one that has uh, left for investigations, and then afterwards, by the time both patients uh, come back to a mill, I already have a treatment plan for each and every one of them. In this way, it, you actually clear out your, your files far much faster, and you work far much faster and much more diligently than and much more effectively than anything else. So that's a way in which you can actually avert the large loads of files when you're on call. So please make sure that you see the patients as quickly as possible and do not take history that is not so relevant. Then make sure that your history is relevant. Then the third thing is of course the fatigue. Now, how exactly are you going to manage when you're always tired? You get home, you just want to sleep, you can't even study, you can't do anything. So you should actually find a routine in which is going to help you actually get over the fatigue much easier. The one such thing is actually getting an exercise plan. Joining a gym or you could even work out at home, this helps boost your energy levels, this helps you perform much, much better than you actually thought you would because now your body is used to this level of fatigue and your body is now building some form of tolerance that will help you now in certain different scenarios. So please make sure that you join a gym. It will help you with the fatigue and also plan your day in such a way that you have enough sleep at night and when you wake up in the morning, you're not feeling drained and too tired to actually go to work. Then number four is that always be punctual and always be dressed well. So always get to the hospital on time, depending on whether your hospital has handovers or your hospital doesn't have handovers or whatever it may be. Always make sure that you're on time. So always be on time. When they call you on the wards, make sure that you go there on time. When you are called for an emergency, make sure that you're there on time. Then the fifth and final thing I left the most important thing for last is knowing how to collect the data, knowing how to study, knowing how to approach the information. So generally, I rearrange my stuff. I don't study the way I used to study as a student. No. So now I often run out of energy because I'm tired all the time. So I find out that if I start a topic from the beginning, from the definition or the basic sciences up until I get to the management. By the time I get to the management, I'm already tired and I'm already worn out. The most important thing that I am focusing on right now is the management. So when I start to condition, I'll make sure that I'll start off with the management first, such that even if I get tired along the way, I would have already covered the management already. And these are the things I can read them as we go and they're not so difficult and they're not so as much important as the management. Of course, I'm not saying they are not important, they are important, but the management would be my main focus. So I usually do this so that when I start reading on a topic, I'm starting from the end and working my back or working myself to the front. So you can actually use that strategy as well because it does help you, especially if you're tired all the time. And that is all I had for you today on this episode of Hospital Survival Guide. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell notification icon to receive notifications of such videos every time I post. Sorry for my voice, and uh, I've been having a really nasty cold that was sent right from the devil. And this, this cold was so bad. Whoever gave me this cold, may the Lord be with you. And a big big congratulations to the channel for reaching 3,000 subscribers and i want to thank each and every single one of you that continues to subscribe that continues to advocate for the channel you guys are all my heroes i am back on the channel doing much more active content and you will see more of me these coming few weeks if you did enjoy leave a like leave a comment 
Hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such videos every time I post. To Zambia and beyond, until next time, my name is Dr. Moses Kazebu. Bye-bye.